So today we're going to talk about why I love film and film photography and some of the photographers that inspire my own work. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel of Amorati. I'm back here again for video number three. Um, if you have a chance to check out the channel, like, comment, subscribe. Some of the videos, there's much more coming. Uh, the next one after this, uh, I just wanted to get this out of the way, is a little bit of BTS of a shoot that will be coming up next Monday. So I'll probably be dropping it in the coming week uh, with Amali and Susanna with Photogenics LA. And uh, we're going to shoot a little BTS with that. We're going to shoot film and digital with the Fuji X-T30 that I have. Um, and a, a lot of my uh, other film cameras. So look out for that. And I'll be also including a short film after that video, after we talk about and discuss what I use and how you can pretty much put together a photo shoot by yourself, styling it yourself with a very minimal budget to take it to the next level. So look out for that. But today we're here to talk about film photography and what it means to me and why I choose to shoot film more than digital. Um, it's been years since I bought a digital camera. The newest one is right here, Fuji X-T30. Uh, the reason why I bought it is because of the great autofocus and the eye tracking on it so I could be able to do these videos and also some other little shorts with models or what have you. But um, I've been sticking to film, specifically this film right here. It's Kodak Color Plus 200. I bought this 10 pack on Amazon for $31. Um, I'll make sure to leave a, a link below to that so you can check it out. But um, yeah, I just started shooting film because if, I guess maybe digital cameras are a little too perfect for me. I like the grain, I like the vintage tones that it will give you, kind of. Uh, very retro. I live in more of a retro realm when it comes to style, when it comes to fashion photography, a genre, the genre of maybe fashion photography from the 70s and the 80s when it was a little bit more free spirited, not super retouched, and you just get the essence of the women or the model or your subject or whatever it may be. Um, I've shot for uh, different magazines as well for with this stuff, and it, and you know it never disappoints me. It has actually very good color. Um, it has a yellowish warmth to it, so it is great if you're going to shoot this in broad daylight. Uh, in overcast days, it's okay, but um, uh, I would say probably on a really sunny day, you could really use this stuff right here. What I really wanted to talk to you about is some of the some of the photographers that inspired my personal work. I'm going to start off with my number one. What really caught my attention many years ago was the work of Hans Fuhrer, this man right here. This man is Swiss. He actually lived out in the wilds of Africa for a very long time, kind of honing his skills. He was actually a graphic designer, then became a photographer. He's really good friends with another great photographer who had actually, back in the day, had a magazine called Nova. His name is Harry Pecanotti. Um, you know, Hans rarely uses any real lighting modifiers. You'll catch him in the studio very rarely, but he's more of a natural light shooter, specifically between dawn and dusk. Uh, magazines like L. Um, Harper's Bazaar, Vogue, these magazines saw his work and picked it up. It captures the real essence of a lot of these subjects and a lot of these models. A lot of it has to do with a lot of uh, sex appeal, you know, um, free-spirited girls doing free-spirited things. He was known to shoot with an Nikon F4 film camera and um, use very, very long lenses like 300mm f2.8 lenses, which he uses still to this day, but I think he's moved on a little bit more on the digital end of the spectrum in regards to uh, photography, but a lot of his work, amazing. It really, when I first saw it, I was awestruck. It looked like a still from a film, you know? Uh, I would say it's like fashion photography meets National Geographic. Old National Geographic to be exact and it's very very uh, great work his use of color it's just simply amazing his color blocking that comes in with his gra graphic design background I'm assuming if you are in the if you're very much so interested in the genre of fashion photography I'm sure you've heard of him his name is Helmut Newton this is a book called work and this is a book called Polaroids all of his test shots 
are right here because back in the obviously you couldn't check the back of your LCD screen to see if you know your photos were exposed correctly or what have you. So this is his book of test shots, which could which obviously they need a book into because this looks more than more than just test shots. These could be prints alone. It's such, such amazing stuff. Tom Newton has a very famous quote where he says, uh, my job as a photographer is to seduce, amuse, and entertain. And he did that very much so. His best work is very much so in black and white. He preferred to shoot in black and white because it, I guess to him it was a bit more simple. I guess, you know, to see the light and the shadows. Color, I guess, complicated things. And also, he was colorblind. So maybe that was another thing, you know? Um, and he was also known to shoot around where, I guess, very close by. He didn't like to travel too far away from wherever, I guess, that his production was being uh, put together, his pre-production. He would like to work within a couple of miles of wherever, I guess, they were located. And that's kind of the, another thing that I really like about him, that you don't need crazy sets or anything like that. They help, but you can create anything, anywhere, as long as you use your creativity. And that's the most important thing. So the next photographer on my list is the French photographer, uh, Patrick de Montchelier. He shot everybody, pretty much, from Cindy Crawford to Robert De Niro, Princess Diana, et cetera, et cetera. And also just kind of, Wherever he was around the world, he shot everything from sensual work all the way up to high fashion work, all the way up to shooting his tribesmen out in Nigeria or Africa or wherever this was shot. And his work is very subtle. I mean, he has a very vast style, to be honest with you. He shoots everything from um, in studio with many different lighting sequences or lighting setups to just basic sunlight or you know overcast day. Hasselblad at the time, nowadays I think he shoots with a Canon DSLR with uh, L-series glass, but that doesn't make any type of difference to be honest. His work is just real, you know, it just, any, you know, he just, uh, another person can just capture the essence of his subjects, you know, at the time and he, it, this almost, see, like this image right here, it reminds me of a very old Hollywood style photography on this end and then on this side you have, you know, a little bit more a sexual version of old Hollywood which is a very, very great contrast in my eyes. You know, everything that I say is very subjective to be honest with you. So, he's all, he was also really good friends with Avidon, Richard Avidon, the legendary fashion photographer that everybody should, should know. And, um, and he was also uh, an assistant to Henri Cartier-Bresson. I'm sure you know who that is. Um, if you don't, search, look for him as well. Um, again, as I said, another another photographer that has really, really captured my attention in regards to creativity and style and just makes me want to think and makes me want to be a better photographer. And that's pretty much it in regards to why I love film photography and some of the photographers that inspire some of my work. If you have a chance to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, See you on the next one. Lebon Marathi, out.